I'm gonna keep the intro to this one a little bit shorter uh, because this is a longer video. It's actually two blocks put together. And the reason I wanted to put these two together is because they are, they complement each other and you'll see that when Scott talks about it. And I'll talk more about this at the end, but uh, this will be the last instructional video from Scott. I will do one more talking about gear and red dots uh, because a lot of you asked for that. So we will do that at the end, um, but this will be the last instructional one. Having said that, if you are interested in Scott's class, please go sign up. And I would, I would highly encourage you, if you can find one, maybe it's out of state, it's out of town or whatever, if you can fly out to it or make the drive, I would encourage you to do it, it is worth it. Um, I know Scott's working on some other stuff to try to make it more accessible to a lot of you guys, which I can't really speak on, but keep an eye out for that. Make sure you're following Modern Samurai on Instagram. Again, link down below. So these two things, I think, put together the ultimate goal of the entire class, and they, for me have been like the biggest takeaway or the biggest measuring stick for what I want to accomplish. So as you look through, this will make sense and then we'll talk about it at the end. So we're gonna start off uh, like kind of like we did yesterday, right? But we're only gonna do this three relays, right? Uh, again, I'm gonna demo it for you. We're gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna show you how to score B8 targets easily, okay? You're uh, gonna go the first time. The first time you tell me, Brandon or AJ, what you think you did. Again, calling your shot here is crucial because you probably can't see the holes if you hit the black, okay? Then the second time, which is gonna be a little bit harder, the coach tells us what the shooter did. You've got to be honed in on technique because you probably can't see the holes, got it? Then when we get through that, then I'm gonna demo, right? I have permission from Kyle DeFour to use his hat call uh, uh, drill in here. His hat call drill is this, okay? Uh, same thing, draw. You gotta get 90 or above in 20 seconds or less, okay? If you did it in his class, you get a DeVore uh, performance hat, right? Here's the thing though, he's recently changed that. If you're shooting a dot, now you only get 15 seconds, right? Uh, funny story, he actually called me, he says, hey bro, what do you think about that? I'm gonna reduce it down to 15. I'm like, hey bro, your class, do what you want. I think that's fair. But for the guys that come to your class with iron sights, do you give them handicap parking and walkers to the range? <laughs> right? Screw those guys. Get up, get with it. Anyway, okay? Uh, but for you guys, since a lot of you, this is the first time you've done it, we're going to keep it at that 20 mark and make it into the pressure drill that we've been doing before. Does that make sense? So the first one, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a nice, careful fire, try and get the best score that I possibly can. Then we'll go look at it, okay? Cool. Come on back. Okay, moving target, <laughs> kind of distracting. Uh, I'm gonna call pretty much all good shots in the center of the black. I'm gonna call one slightly to seven and one slightly to two, but I think there should be all good shots in the black, okay? Let's go take a look at it. So here's the high one, here's the low one, target moving. Here's the thing, I told some of you guys, like who was the one that was getting hit with, in the face with brass yesterday when we were doing, yeah, yeah, that stuff, right guys? guys I and 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 maybe Brandon can attest to that. That I don't know. I do not know one face shooting uh, meat eater, right? That doesn't do this when they get hit with brass, <laughs> right? I don't care how much you train, dude. That shit hurts. Okay, or it's an effect, or at least it's a thing, right? This target moving is a thing. Okay, the target was down. AJ just told me, dude, on the ones that were the target went like that, and the target went like that. Am I going to be able to diagnose that better? No, I can't control the target right? So what I'm going to do is the ones that where it didn't move and we get in here. If we look in there, right? So we got uh, one nine line. Eh, yeah, I'll give myself a line break on that, right? All of them are in the 10, one right there. So if the target didn't move, these would probably be in the black. Let's just say I give myself nines on those, okay? So I'm going to score this as it is though, because, you know, uh, environment, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So if I score this as is, you, what you do is you go, you take what your, you go 10 minus the number, you have the result of that, okay? That's what you add up. Don't go from zero, go down from 100, right? So if we do the eights, the eights are minus two, minus two, and then the nine is minus one. 
So that's two, four, five. This would be a 95, okay? And uh, not that they really matter, but you wanna count your X's in case there's a tie. That's how they do it in bullseye shooting, right? If everybody got a 100, the one who gets the most X's is the one that's, that's the tiebreaker, right? So if I'm being stringent on myself, I got a 95, 2X with a moving target. With a moving target, okay? Does that make sense? Cool, all right. I did. Uh, it's just this hand. It just. I, I noticed my deviation moving up this way, and it's just getting used to that pressure here mm -hmm. uh, of pushing it up. So I just okay. getting it more pulled up into yep. me as opposed to over. Good. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do the speed bowl now. Okay. We're gonna do the Kyle DeFour uh, performance, right? Which again, we're gonna. It's from a draw, right? Our goal is uh, 90 in under 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, me, I'm gonna push it a little bit, which should be interesting in this wind, right? Uh, I'm gonna try and do it under under 10. Eleven eighty six. Okay, a little bit over. Target's moving, being a little bit careful. Uh, that's probably not my best work. Let's go see what happens. So let's take a look at that, right? Um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm not timing anything. I just want to make sure that the trigger is prepped right at the wall. So then when it comes in the back on this, I don't give a shit about tens and X's. I want it all in the black, okay? Um, so if we look at this, right? So that's a seven minus three minus one. Uh, one, two, I just count that out. Minus one, minus one, minus one. Is that one? That's minus one, right? So I got a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I got a 92 and three X. And what was the time? 1186. 1186. Okay. Uh, what did I do it in California? I did like a 90. Uh, yeah. The 94 and seven ish? Seven, eight ish? Oh, I thought it was eight, eight. Okay, so 858, right? So again, what was the difference between that and this? No wind out there, right? So you got to be careful as the thing is adjusting, right? So that during during my demo, so it was just a little bit more time. How much time was it? 0.2 seconds, right? I beat Kyle's by three and a half seconds, right? On the red dot one, on the one he used to do, uh, I beat it by eight and a half seconds, okay? So being careful does not mean being slow. Does that make sense? Cool, so we're gonna do this one at a time. This is the pressure. Here are the rules, okay? Here are the rules, right? So it's about the balance of speed and accuracy, okay? If you get a 90, you qualify. After that, the one with the fastest time wins. So if you get a 99 in 16 seconds, okay? But another guy gets a 90 in 11 seconds, the 90 with 11 wins because it's a balance of speed and accuracy. Does that make sense? Yeah? Cool. Awesome. Let's do it. Ten. 13.01. 13.01. Balance of speed and accuracy. When the cone of deviation opens up like that, yes, you need to take a little bit more time. But the basic concepts and the techniques are the same. You just have to be a little bit more careful. That doesn't necessarily mean slow down. When you blame your inaccuracy on speed, right? It's not speed. It's your technique. It's right. We have a tendency to fall down on technique because we have less time to do it but when the technique is there it doesn't it doesn't matter guys you know how many b8s i shoot these days uh i shoot i teach one three-day class twice a month so i shoot eight maybe four a month and i can do that right why because my technique is the same from 
three, five, seven, ten to 25 yards. We got to work on the technique and work on the balance of speed and accuracy, right? Those guys that all they do is shoot B8s and shoot their B8 scores, and they don't put any speed to anything, right? When you have to shoot, right, whether it's in a match, self-defense, or on the job, right, you're not going to go... So you better learn how to get the proper technique under pressure for the test. Okay, for the record, I had to document this. I won the speed and accuracy on the B8. So, 1301, 90, I'll take that. What we need to do is stop thinking of speed and accuracy as being diametrically opposed. They are two sides to the same coin, okay? So the first way you can kind of graduate to the next level of craftsmanship is stop listening to anything Wyatt Earp said, all right? You guys know Tombstone was not a documentary, right? Okay? There's only been one documented person that Wyatt Earp shot. He did not shoot anybody at the OK Corral documented. He shot one person who was with a shotgun. Why do we listen to Wyatt Earp with pistols? It's ruined your life so far. So the whole slow is smooth, smooth is fast crap, forget it, right? Do you know what the final part of that axiom is? Which came from him saying, make haste slowly. The final part of that axiom is, speed is the economy of motion. That makes you think about things, right? Speed's now part of the equation. If you drop off that third part, then you go, well, shit, I'm slow. Oh, that means I'm smooth. I'm fast. Let's stop practicing. Let's go have a beer, right? But when you put in that third part, speed becomes a part of things, right? Uh, the other one is uh, speed is fine, but accuracy is final. Here's the thing, guys. Fuck off. They're both important. Okay, if you can hit a gnat's ass at 100 yards, but it takes you an hour, nobody cares. Okay, if you can get the gun out and start shooting in 0.65, but you can't hit anything, nobody cares. It is the balance of speed accuracy. Okay, my buddy Matt Pronko runs X ray Alpha, he was in the unit for 16 years, grandmaster in USPSA. He says that there are two things on the table speed and accuracy. You leave one on the table, the opponent takes the other one. Leave nothing on the table, okay? But in order to pra practice each of those skills, we need to do them separately, just like you do with any other physical activity, right? So bro, you lift, right? When you're doing deadlifts, are you sprinting at the same time? Right, who likes to run around here? Doc, you look like you like to run. Are you doing bro curls at the same time? No, you do them separately, but it's all part of physical fitness, right? So we put them in the toolbox so that when the compound activity comes, we can put those activities together and succeed. It's the same thing we're doing now. So in order to do the speed part of things, we're going to borrow uh, Bill Wilson's bill drill, right? So what is the bill drill? Again, created by Bill Wilson in the mid nineties. He wanted to come up with a way a person, uh, see if a person had the uh, foundational skills to be a master class shooter. In the mid 90s, the highest uh, classification was master. Grandmaster came out in the late 90s, okay? So what, do you, what is the bill drill? Seven yards, six rounds, A zone, two seconds, okay? He and Ro uh, Rob Latham helped him make it uh, that drill very famous, right? But they did it with gamer guns, gamer rigs, gamer ammo, cool. He also said though, that if you could do it from a duty rig or concealment in three seconds, that was pretty spicy. Now you may be going, hold on. You're talking about the legends of the shooting sports, Rob Wilson, Rob Latham. They could do it in two seconds. How are you expecting us to? Well, guys, that was the mid nineties, right? This is 2022. We have better kit, better ammo, better information and better training if I do say so myself, okay? But it begs the question, do you need a two second build drill? If you got a two second problem, you do, right? But even if you don't think you need that two second build drill and all you think you need is two and a half seconds, right? And that's the best you can do in practice on a beautiful Texas day with like-minded Americans, you're not getting that under pressure. So we need to build up that surplus of skill in practice in case there's a degradation of skill during the test so we can get that two and a half you deem to be necessary, right? But like the draw, like the three and two that we did the uh, previous two days, we're not gonna say go faster or slower, we're gonna do it based on the visual cues of our draw and what our sights are doing in relation to the size of the target, right? Stand by. Okay, 296. Did everybody see the 8020 on that? Here, very careful. My gun, I'm not losing control, I'm just letting it drop, drop, drop. And we got a nice tight group all in that middle section of the A zone, right? So 
uh, draw, 141. Super demonstrative 80-20 for me, okay? Uh, but the splits, 32, 32, 30, 31, and 30. All within two hundredths of a second of each other. Are we starting to get the idea of how precise your vision can be in relation to the dot and the size of the target when we start seeing everything? Yeah, cool, all right. So now we gotta do some work, right? It's gonna be a 90-10. If the dot's there, I'm gonna pull the trigger. Should be between two and two and a half if I do everything right. So two, three, three, draw was a 117, right? Um, usually, that, that, so that 8020 is very demonstrative for you guys, right? Being that way. Generally, my 8020 is about between 115 and 125 when I'm doing it, right? That 9010, um, I'm giving just a little bit uh, slower than my usual, usual pace, right? Because again, we shot all those B8s out there. I was being super careful. That's why we got to complement the accuracy with speed, okay? So that 9010 was about 117. Just a little bit too careful of pace for me, but it still worked out to what I want it to be. So 117 on the draw, 26, 23, 23, 21, 23. Other than one, all between 03, right? If the dot was there, I pulled the trigger, but I didn't get after it, okay? This time, so you guys have seen me do 90, 95 draws, right? So the first draw was a 117. If I do a 90 draw this time, right? I'm gonna say 0.27 right there. Throw in the last four, add 02, 08. I should be under two seconds if I do everything right, okay? So again, 95.5, I'm gonna get after it, okay? Ah, one little bit high, what was the time? 195. There you have it, there is Scott's block of instruction on speed and accuracy. Now that's not the only block of instruction, but I felt like those two highlighted those two aspects the most. So I felt like putting them together was the best way to do it. Now there's a whole lot more in the class that's covered that we didn't show here. Um, we've got trigger prep and trigger reset. You've got shooting on the move, shooting one-handed, a lot of other drills and things, a lot of cheat codes, target transitions, the list goes on and on, tracking the dot, drawing from outside the waistband. So there's a whole lot more that's not covered here. And again, I would encourage you if you can go to a Scott class. Uh, but for me, the biggest takeaway with this speed and accuracy is something that I personally struggled with coming in because I, I could shoot fast, but I couldn't shoot accurate. And I could shoot accurate, but I couldn't do it fast. And that's something that I've been working on ever since the course. I knew that it was a shortcoming, and I knew it was something I needed to work on, and a lot of that came down to technique, and Scott mentioned that, and there's a few other things he mentions that we couldn't go into detail in this video on, but um, getting the technique right, technique right was so important for me to unlock that part to where I could do, I could be both accurate and fast. And uh, winning the B8 challenge was, was a big, um, encouragement for me. Uh, it, it was, it was like a, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. And it, it's what's kind of encouraged me to continue down this journey and continue down this path, um, with these new ideas and concepts. So it's been very helpful with that. Uh, the speed side has been a journey. It's been a work in progress because I'm still ingraining the grip and things like that. But I, I can say since the class from inside the waistband, I have gotten down to 210 to like 225 consistently on build drills. And, you know, when we were talking about that, you know, Scott mentioned in the video, he says, look, if you're to 1.8 splits, don't worry about your splits so much anymore. Worry about speeding up on the draw. And looking at my splits, that's about what I am. I'm about a, like a 1.8 split to a 2.0 split, but 1.8 consistently. And what it would take for me to drop down to that sub two second build drill would be going 0.15 splits or faster. But the easier way to get sub two seconds is to speed up my draw because my draw is like 110 to 125 on those build drills. So being able to speed up that draw, that efficiency there is what's gonna allow me to go, go sub two seconds. So it's finding those things and fine tuning those little areas that will allow you to be faster. Now, it, of course, it would be much better if I can shoot faster splits. And if some of the guys I shoot with shoot like one five, one three splits, um, they're crazy fast. But you know, for most of us, that's gonna be the way that we pick up the most time is those manipulations. And all that can be practiced in dry fire. Uh, the only thing that you can't practice in dry fire is obviously live fire. So that's where your splits are gonna come in. But 
learning that over time. It's going to take a little bit of time to do it, but it has been a great journey and very encouraging. Um, I've since run the B8 drill as well. Um, I, I, I've taken basically these two drills and it's been my warm up. So I start out with a B8 cold and I try to run it sub 15 and I think I've done it like three or four more times since then, running it cold, running 90 or better and the times are slowly increasing. And so everything that Scott talks about, about this support hand uh, freeing up your trigger finger to do what it needs to do is what's gonna help you improve your B8s. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're trying to improve your B8, I would tell you, go back, watch those grip videos. Um, and as you're improving your speed, again, go back and watch the grip videos because it's that's the key for me that unlocked everything to improving speed and accuracy. And those are the two metrics we have to use to measure everything. And so I, I see a lot of people in my comment section, whether it's here on, on YouTube or on Instagram talking about, you don't need shot timers or this and that. Some people have made jokes and things like that. And and I, I poke fun at it. I don't. It doesn't bother me any. Um, it's part of the nature of being in the position that I'm in. But without data, you know, the shot timer gives you data. And without that data, you have no metric to measure your improvement. We can look at, at a B8 and see, yes, we are shooting more accurate, but you may be shooting 20 seconds slower. And so we want to improve both. So we've got to improve both speed and accuracy. And so the B8 gives you a great metric for accuracy. Your shot timer and a build drill is going to give you a great metric for speed. And then those varying distances, like, like Scott talked about being more careful in certain situations, not slower, but more careful or more, more urgent uh, as the situation dictates. So I hope that uh, these, this series has helped you guys. Um, I hope that you found it really inform uh, informational. If there's somebody else you want me to like do a similar course with, let me know if there's something else you're interested in. Maybe it's something we as the average Joes can cover for you. I do have some long range stuff planned with Bruiser and a few other guys. But uh, yeah, if there's something you guys are interested in, I just wanna put out content that helps get the community to a higher level or a higher standard of shooting and, and firearms manipulation. So uh, leave it in the comments below if there's someone you're interested in. Uh, make sure you're following Scott to keep up to date with uh, the new things he has coming out that I can't talk about. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for following along. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one. Also for my camera people, there's two lenses up there that are for sale, a uh, 50 and 35 millimeter Canon. Um, so if you're interested in that, hit me up. Uh, I've got to sell some stuff to pay for a new computer for this channel. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.